the sequel, uh, I want to talk more about um, how uh, Pygmalion as a romance uh, has been re uh, revised and also the consequences. And finally, uh, I'll just let you know what happened to uh, Clara uh, because it's not yet mentioned uh, in the presentation. Uh, uh, the two major questions I want to ask uh, of the sequel is uh, first, uh, how uh, th this sequel uh, revises uh, Pygmalion as a romance. Okay, or uh, denies uh, that it can be a romance. Uh, so that's a major question. And then, of course, uh, um, in Act 5, we, we get to have a sense of why Eliza will now stay with uh, Higgins. But pretty much, uh, I think the possibilities are open in Act 5. But uh, in the sequel, uh, Bernard Shaw explains very clearly why why Eliza uh, chooses not to marry uh, Higgins, but Freddie. Okay, so I think the, these are the reasons that we need to consider. And then you can uh, de determine whether you agree with Bernard Shaw or not, okay? Um, so about the first one, romance, uh, l this is to remind you of the definitions of romance. You know, we talked about it in the first class, uh, that romance can involve love, but it can also be something magical like an adventure or magical transformation. You know, uh, when the idea of romance first came out, it was mostly about adventure or m something related to magic or with, uh, related to fairy or to God, etc. The idea of romance as love story becomes popu became popular only in the 19th century. In the 19th century. I think the, and this is why Bernard Shaw is so up against the idea of romance as love story, okay? Um, so uh, this is the beginning of the postscript. He said that our imagination has been enfeebled, enfeebled uh, by uh, uh, our dependence on the ready mates and the reach me downs. Ready mates and reach me down basically are just uh, the trite formulas. You know, like with Hollywood films, there are a lot of formulas, like uh, uh, the girl, girl, a girl meets a boy maybe in the first uh, one tenth of the film, and then they fall in love, and then there's problems maybe in the, uh, the two thirds of the films, and they almost break apart, and then some pr uh, something happened, they they solve the problems, and then they are happy together at the end, etc. So usually there are a lot of formulas uh, uh, to Hollywood films or the, to the romance as uh, love stories, and Bernard Shaw uh, uh, does not like it. You know, uh, I think he. Uh, really try to uh, keep people from changing the ending of the film Pygmalion, but without success. And that's why he wrote the postscript, okay? Um, and he said that um, uh, sometimes uh, romance uh, with the happy endings you know, can misfit all the stories. In other words, uh, it makes all the stories the same, you know, and all the stories with uh, poor endings, okay? So that's his reason against the use of uh, romance, or the definition of romance as love story. And then uh, he also, in the beginning of our uh, postscript, he also talks about how uh, Eliza's transformation is nothing new. It's actually very common. Um, and there he gave an example of uh, Nell Green. Uh, let me show you her picture. This one, Nell Green. Um, uh, this one, uh, this woman was uh, 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 not a flower girl, but one who sells oranges you know, near a theater. theater. And then she became uh, an actress. And then she becomes a, uh, a mistress of King Charles. And that's how uh, her status give, uh, keeps uh, being improved, you know, as she uh, becomes more and more, more popular. And this is uh, a, uh, an example. And then a lot of uh, flower girls or uh, girls from the lower class, you know, will, you, will see her as an example of, uh, and, and know that uh, social climbing. You know, social climbing has been possible in the 19th century. It is common for the uh, middle classes, you know, but towards the end of the 19th century, uh, even the lower class people uh, can consider it as a possibility. Okay, so that's the whole idea. Um, so so uh, he's also against uh, the idea of transformation as, as something magical. Okay, and he said that uh, it's really, you know, something happening, you know, uh, on daily basis. Okay, and then uh, he disagreed with uh, uh, the idea that the heroine has to ma marry the he hero. Um, 
uh, and then Eliza, uh, Eliza's uh, marriage with Freddie, you know, uh, and the description of how they run the shop, you know, is completely against the whole idea of romance because uh, they come into a lot of troubles, a lot of troubles. Okay, so uh, basically the whole uh, postscript, you can see it as a, uh, an argument against uh, seeing Pygmalion, the, the play Pygmalion, as a romance with happy and a happy ending. Okay. About uh, and then he goes on uh, explaining why Eliza uh, would not marry uh, Higgins or would not stay with Higgins. Okay, for one thing, uh, uh, he said that um, Eliza is, has her advantages. She's young, she's beautiful, uh, so she does not need to. She ha she's free to choose. In other words, she's not that desperate. You know, if she is desperate, uh, you know, has no other possibilities then she might decide to stay with, uh, with Higgins or with the two bachelors and become three bachelors, okay? But uh, she actually has some choices and that's one major reason for her to not marry Higgins, okay? And then uh, also, uh, this is on page 111. Maybe you can take a look at it. Um, here he said that Eliza's inst instinct tells her not to marry Higgins. It does not tell her to give him up. Okay, so in other words, uh, Bernard Shaw is consistent in her, in his interpretation of Eliza, that uh, she is self-contradictory. You know, she, uh, apparently she does not want to stay with Higgins, but emotionally she's still attached to him. And that's uh, something that's described also in the sequel. So uh, her instinct does not tell her to give him up. So they are still connected uh, in some emotional ways although uh, she's married to Freddy, okay? Uh, on the other hand, he also described, uh, Bernard Shaw also describes uh, Higgins, uh, why Higgins does not want to get married. And he gives several reasons. Uh, what the first is his love for his mother. And the second is his interest in science, in, in his own profession, in Milton and the universal alphabet, okay? And I think it is um, Shaw's description of uh, uh, Higgins' love for the mother uh, which is very interesting, you know, uh, this is something I'll talk more about later, okay, v uh, very soon, but not now. Uh, I, I, let me just summarize what uh, Higgins, uh, sorry, Bernard Shaw says. Uh, he said that it's very typical of an imaginative boy with an intelligent mother uh, to, uh, um, to be attached to the mother. You know, in other words, uh, if a boy is sensitive, is uh, brilliant, and then he, if he has a great mother who is intelligent, then this uh, boy will be attached to the mother and will look down upon the other women who cannot compete with the mother. So that's his major argument to say that uh, because of uh, Mrs. Higgins' intelligence, you know, her talent, her uh, cultivation, her knowledge, etc. Uh, sure can. Uh, no, sorry. I think I think I'm confused with the two about the two. Because in a way, I think the, uh, Bernard Shaw has a lot of his own ideas uh, projected onto Higgins. So I'm kind of confused with uh, Higgins and uh, Shaw. Anyway, here, um, Shaw argues that because of his love, Higgins' love for uh, the mother, he is disengaged from the other women uh, emotionally. Remember in uh, the beginning, I told you that um, the rumor has it Rumor has it that uh, Shaw uh, stays with, uh, m marries a woman uh, without cons sexual consummation for about th 30 years. Okay, and this is after, uh, only at that point, when only a uh, after he married that woman, uh, does he move out of his mother's household. Okay, and he marries that woman because that woman takes, took care of him when he was very ill for, for a long period of time. Okay, I, th I think all of that is very, very interesting. Okay, and also the woman, I think, uh, also declared uh, bachelorhood. You know, she was a famous bachelor too. And then the two of them got married without sexual consummation, okay. So uh, I think all of that um, is quite interesting. Um, on the one hand, it is suggestive of um, some intellectuals uh, in the 19th century and how uh, they have ideals about science, about uh, uh, 
maybe art, uh, poetry, etc. And they see that as their profession, and they don't want to be humanly involved or emotionally involved. Okay, but I think the, there is another side to it. You know, and that's that's not the other side. I'll I'll talk more about later. You know, I I I'm not sure, even sure if uh, Shaw himself is uh, clear about the other side. You know, of this type of uh, emotional disengagement uh, from women uh, and the uh, the emotional attachment uh, to the mother. Yeah. Okay. But uh, these are the reasons he gives. Um, and he said that um, he he then said that. Even if the mother dies, he still has the universal alphabet, Milton, to fall in love with, to still love. So uh, he will not think of uh, marrying a woman. Um, okay, and then um, uh, for Eliza's deci decision, uh, there are other aspects. For instance, uh, you know, she uh, resents Higgins' uh, domineering, uh, domineering uh, superiority. You know, the way uh, he is rude to to her. Okay. Also, um, uh, she does not trust Higgins' cleverness. Sometimes, uh, uh, Higgins can outwit her. You know, can uh, 就是他的那个聪明才智会让他没有话讲 outwit her. Okay, so he has a kind of coaxing uh, cleverness to get around her, to evade her wrath, to to do what he whatever he wants. Okay, remember uh, at one point. Uh, when um, Mrs. Pierce uh, complains about Higgins' use of dirty language, okay, sa and saying that you use it on breakfast, butter, applying, uh, anyway, on three things, like applying butter, breakfast, etc. And then uh, Higgins switches around to say that, oh, this is mere alliteration, 压头韵。我现在再提醒你们一下，压头韵，因为我们到那个诗的那个 section， you know， we are going to talk about different kinds of rhymes， okay？ But you know， this is one example of how Higgins， how Higgins is really clever in switching the topic， you know， in avoiding uh getting blamed by the others， okay？ And Eliza's uh marrying Freddie， I think uh for on the one hand he's a gentleman， and I think that's still a married， okay？ For instance， uh towards the end， uh it's found out that uh, Freddie's last name is not Anso Hill, but um, this is on page 123, ESM, the fourth uh, line from the bottom, Chalonoy, uh, Chaloner, Chaloner, Frederick, Ch Frederick Chaloner. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure uh, the implications of Chaloner in the 19th century, but you know, to just quickly Google, uh, for the, this uh, name, you know, it's the name of Archbishop in the 16th century. So it's a big name. It's definitely a big name. Uh, so I think the, and then uh, Eliza is, you know, in, uh, at that point uh, is very proud, you know, uh, about her husband's having this big name. So I think the status, just uh, the uh, social way, still matters for Eliza. And on the other hand, uh, this is a, a, another very tricky argument uh, that Eliza, uh, no, uh, Bernard Shaw makes, and that is uh, Eli Eliza chooses Freddie because she's weak. He's weak and, uh, and also attracted to Eliza as a strong woman. Okay, uh, later on he even makes the, uh, this uh, um, example to say that, you know, will she look forward to a lifetime of fetching Higgins slippers or a lifetime of Freddie's fetching hers? Okay, I think that this is a very um, tricky and uh, clever argument, and uh, I want to talk more about this too. You know, because I I don't think uh, you need to agree with uh, Bernard Shaw. You know, in this uh, in saying that Eliza's decision is to decide to marry somebody who loves her but who is weaker than her. Okay, this does not have to be the decision in your choice of spouse or your choice of lovers, okay? Uh, so basically, uh, uh, Bernard Shaw also uh, admits that Freddie is not bad looking. So biologically, he's not repulsive to her. So I think uh, Shaw does cover different aspects in explaining their relationship and uh, Eliza's decision. So the whole thing, I think, is a great uh, study of personalities, you know, like the play itself and then the postscript, 
Okay. But then still, you know, my question here is uh, whether you agree with uh, Eliza's reasons or Shaw's reason. What Shaw thinks to be Eliza's reasons, okay? Um, so here, um, this is a part uh, where he talks about the strong versus the weak. Uh, it's on page 114. So maybe you, take a, you can take a look at it. Um, he says that uh, the strong, the strong person does not want another strong person by the side or as a partner, okay? Because the first lion thinks the last a bore. You know, it would be, for Bernard Shaw, boring to have two strong persons together. Okay, or maybe two um, uh, too tense. You know, the relationship would be too tense if two strong persons are together, okay? Um, and then, uh, so he said that, uh, the woman, uh, the man or woman who feels strong enough for two, seek for every other quality in a partner than strength. So this is his reason of Eliza's choosing Freddie as a weaker one, as her spouse. You know, because she doesn't want to have a strong one, especially the strong one who uh, does not respect her, you know, as her spouse. Okay, and then on the other hand, he, he, he said the reverse is also true, and that is, we people tend to uh, want to marry strong people who do not frighten them too much. And this often leads them to make the mistake uh, we describe metaphorically as biting off more than they can chew. Okay. Um, I don't have time for you to uh, each talk about uh, your responses to this. Uh, I think there can be many, many different interpretations and different responses. You know, uh, like uh, when I talk with this, uh, with uh, Daphne, we did. Uh, try to um, cover different aspects. For one thing, uh, I think uh, you need to define what strength means. You know, I think the um, uh, the great thing about rhetoric or epigram, ep epigrammic language like Bernard Shaw's, is that the, it all sounds very good and it all sounds very convincing. But then the problem is that sometimes you can look at it from different perspectives because there's just n one line two lines, very well-patterned lines. And then uh, sometimes, uh, you know, if you, uh, like, if you interpret this as physical strength, then the, the meanings will be different from if you s uh, look at it as intellectual strength. Okay, and I would think that, um, no, for me personally, uh, if you interpret strength as uh, virtues, marriage, then uh, maybe you really don't want to marry one person uh, who you look down upon, you know, in terms of his, pers his or her personalities or his or her uh, virtues. You know, if there is some aspect of this personality that you really hate, that you don't like, and you want to just change in order to make things better, then there's something wrong. Intellectual 是很重要的意思就是说是 那如果说你真的是look down upon him and think that 哦,没关系,这就是一个小错误,那这个会有问题。On oh, the other hand, strengths can also be interpreted as like social strengths, uh, appearance. 那这个话就要看个人,好像比如说以我来说的话,我绝对不会找比我英俊很多的人在一起。就像如果说我女儿如果找比她英俊很多的话,我会觉得不安全。对,就是一种那个social uh, dexterity或是appearance. Sometimes uh, they have to be compatible. 
you know, in, in my perspective. 好，那可是哈，所谓的 weak people， 就我我自己的解释方式， weak people 是说他看不清楚。这个 weakness 哈，就是你其实可以不需要讲说 Bernard Shaw 讲的是 universal truth， 可是你要想说这个 weak 它含义是什么？可能有一些人的 weakness 是 lack of self knowledge， 然后他就每一直想要去找那种。非常那个 on on the spot under the spotlight， 非常 glamorous， 非常 successful 的人。那可是通常，你除非说你能够忍受一种生活，是说别人会 ，you know， 呃，呃 ，always want to compete with you。好，要不然的话，那个就这种这种这种关系不会持久，因为他有一是一个 un unequal footing。You feel that you are less important socially than、uh, the other person。好，所以我觉得那个其实讲到 spouse 哈，它的 compatibility 有很多方面的。我们还没有提到一个是 sexual 的，其实是也是要要考虑的。好，所以那个就是他基本上 strengths and weakness， 你可以从很多方面去看，来考虑说哪一种 strengths 和哪一种 compatibility 对你来说是无所谓的。就是呃，像比如说，在在以我自己来做例子，那个以我和我先生来说，我是非常严谨，他是非常轻松的。可是这个就是非常肯对我来说是 compatible， 好，可是，在一些原则上我们是一致的，那这样是无所谓，好，所以你自己要清呃搞呃搞清楚什么叫 strength， 什么叫 weakness， 